Hi everyone, in this video, I will be talking about basic terms in statistics, including histogram, box plot, numerical summary of data, and probability distribution. Okay, what is the histogram? A histogram is a compact summary of data. Use histogram to examine the shape and the spread of your data. To construct a histogram for continuous data, we must divide the range of the data into intervals, which are usually called cells or bins. If it is possible, the bins should have equal widths to enhance the visual information in the histogram. Some judgment must be used in selecting the number of bins so that a reasonable display can be developed. The number of beans depends on the number of observations and the amount of the scatter or dispersion in the data. A histogram that uses either too few or too many beans will not be informative. Choosing the number of beans approximately equals to the square root of number of observations. Usually works well in practice. Once the number of beans and the lower and upper boundary of each bean has been determined, the data are sorted into the beans and the number of observation in each bean is counted. To construct the histogram, use the horizontal axis to represent the measurement scale for the data and the vertical scale to represent the counts or frequencies. Rectangles are drawn over each bean, and the height of each rectangle is proportional to frequency. Okay, there is important note here. Histograms can be relatively sensitive to the choice of number and width of the beans. For a small data sets, histograms may change dramatically in appearance if the number or width of the beans changes. For this reason, we prefer to think of the histogram as a technique best suited for larger data sets, containing, let's say, 75, 200 or more observations. So, the histogram gives us some information about the shape of the distribution of data, and also it gives us some information about the central tendency in the data and the scatter or variability in the data. These are the main information that we can get from the histogram. Here's an example. A quality control engineer needs to ensure that the caps on the plastic bottles are fastened correctly. If the caps are fastened too loosely, they may fall off during shipping. If they are fastened too tightly, they may be too difficult to remove. The target value for fastening the caps is 18. The engineer collects a random sample of 68 bottles and tests the amount of the torque that is needed to remove the caps. Here is the data. To plot the histogram, go to Graph menu and select Histogram. Then select Simple and then select column C1, or torque, and finally hit OK. As part of initial investigation, we created a histogram of torque data to evaluate the distribution of data. As we can see, most caps were fastened with a torque of 14 to 24. Only one cap was very loose, with a torque of less than 11. However, the distribution is positively skewed, is right skewed. Many caps required a torque of greater than 24, and 5 caps required a torque of greater than 33, nearly 2 times the target value, which was 80. So, you see that how histogram gives such useful information about shape, tendency, and variability of data. Let's plot the histogram of data in MATLAB. 
In MATLAB, the histogram function uses an automatic binning algorithm that returns beans with a uniform width to cover the whole range of observations. In MATLAB, we use histogram function. In this function, we can define the number of beans as well. In this command, the object H is holding histogram object and all its properties. If you type edge, you can get all properties. We can get the number of counts or frequencies in each bean by command edge.values. This says the third bean includes 12 observations and the fourth bean includes 14 observations. We can also create a histogram using the probability normalization, like this. The second topic which I would like to talk about is numerical summary of data. The histogram provides a visual display of three properties of sample data. The shape of the distribution of data, the central tendency in the data, and the scatter or variability in the data. Assume x1, x2, until xn are the observations in a sample. The most important measure of central tendency in the sample is sample average. Note that the sample average is simply the arithmetic mean of n observations, summation of all numbers divided by the number of observations. The sample average for the data is the point at which the histogram exactly balances. So the sample average represents the center of mass of sample data. The variability in the sample data is measured by the sample variance. Note that the sample variance is simply the sum of the squared deviation of each observation from the sample average divided by the sample size minus one. Generally, the larger is the sample variance, the greater is the variability in the sample data. The unit of sample variance is a square is the square of original units of data. So, since it is often inconvenient and awkward to interpret, we usually prefer to use the square root of S square, which is called sample standard deviation S as a measure of variability. Please note that the standard deviation doesn't reflect the magnitude of sample data, only gives information about the scatter of data about the average. That's it. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how easily we can get these numerical summary from the torque data. Here we load torque data. With data stats function, we can get the numerical summary of data and then save in torque underline ds. Then with this line of code, we can access to a standard deviation of data. This line returns the mean of data and this line returns the standard deviation of data. We can also get mode, median, mean, or max of the data. Please note that the median is the middle number in a sorted ascending or descending list of numbers. You can get the similar result from the mini tab. Go to a stat, and then basic statistics, and then display descriptive statistics. In the variables section, select torque or column C1. Click on statistics and select those information that you need. And then I finally hit OK. Here is the summary of data. The third topic which I would like to talk about is the box plots. The box plot is a graphical display that simultaneously displays several important features of data, such as 
location or central tendency of data, the spread or variability, departure from symmetry, identification of observations that lie far from the majority of data. These observations are often called outliers. A box plot also displays the three quartiles of data, the minimum and the maximum of the data on the rectangular box, which could be aligned either horizontally or vertically. This box encloses interquartile range with the left or lower line at the first quartile Q1 and the right or upper line at the third quartile Q3. A line is drawn through the box at the second quartile. This is the 50th percentile or the sample median. There are two lines at both ends which extend to extreme values. These lines are usually called whiskers. Some authors refer to box plot as a box and whisker plot. In some computer programs, the whiskers only extend a distance of 1.5 multiplied to Q3 minus Q1 from the ends of the box, and observation beyond those limits are flagged as potential outliers. So always remember, use box plot to assess and compare the shape, central tendency, and variability of sample distribution, and look for outliers. Box plot works best when the sample size is at least 20. So, the question is how to compute Q1, Q2, and Q3. First, the data must be ordered from smallest to largest to compute quartiles. Quartiles divides the number of data points into four quarters. The Q1, which is called first quartile, lower quartile, 25th percentile, splits the lower 20 5% of data from the highest 75%. It is the median of lower half of the data set. Q2, or so-called second quartile, median, or 50th percentile, cuts data set in half. Q3, or so-called third quartile, upper quartile, 75th percentile, splits the highest 25th of data from the lowest 75%. It is the median of upper half of data set. So, as you can see, 50% of data are between Q1 and Q3. Just remember that this is the number of data between Q1 and Q3, or interquartile range. In Minitab, go to Graph, select Box Plot, and then Simple from graph variable select torque and hit OK. Here is a box plot in Minitab. In MATLAB, we can use box plot function to draw the box plots. Run this part, and here is the box plots. Okay, the fourth topic which I would like to talk about is probability distribution. This sample is a collection of measurements or observations selected from some larger population. For example, assume some measurements are obtained from a sample of ball bearings selected from manufacturing process. The population in this example is the collection of all diameters produced by this process. A probability distribution is a mathematical model that relates the value of the variable, here the diameter on x-axis, with the probability of occurrence of that value in the population. We can visualize the diameter as a random variable because it takes on different values, any number bigger than zero, right? So remember this. The probability distribution describes the probability of occurrence of any value of diameter in the population. For example, diameter between A and B in the whole population. There are two types of probability distributions. 
continuous distributions and discrete distributions. When the variable being measured is expressed on a continuous scale like height or weight, it could take on any number. Its probability distribution is called a continuous distribution. In this case, the probability distribution of ball bearing diameter is continuous because it could take any number, for example, 20.12 mm. There is another probability distribution which is called discrete distribution. When the parameter being measured can only take on certain values such as the integer 0, 1, 2, and so on, the probability distribution is called a discrete distribution. For example, the distribution of the number of defects in each ball bearing manufacturing line or the number of defects per day would be a discrete distribution. One day it could be 5, another day 6, or another day 0. The height of each spike is proportional to the probability. The probability that the random variable x takes on the specific value xi as p of xi. The mean mu of a probability distribution is a measure of the central tendency in the distribution or its location. The mean is defined by this equation. For the case of a discrete random variable with exactly n equally likely values, the mean value can be computed with this equation. As you can see, the mean is simply the center of mass of probability distribution. That's a summation of the old observations divided by the number of observations. Please note that the mean is not necessarily the 50th percentile of the distribution. Mean is not necessarily equal to the median. The scatter spread or variability in a distribution is expressed by the variance. The definition of variance for discrete random variable with any equally likely values is the average square distance of each member of the population from the mean. The variance is expressed in the square of the units of the original value. The standard deviation can be defined as a square root of variance. Alright, in this video we covered four basic terms in statistics. Histogram, numerical summary of data, box plot and probability distribution. We will discuss more about continuous and discrete distributions in this video series. We are going to release video series on different topics including application of statistics in manufacturing and quality control, robotics and mechatronics, industrial machine vision, system dynamics, finite element analysis with abacus, GDNT and tolerance analysis, and many other interesting topics. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified when a new video on this topic is released.